Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Bipper, and I'm going to help you learn how to play the Kingdoms of Heckfire. Um, today, I'm going to go over the very basics of the game, um, some things you should do early on, and just a couple tips. Uh, I do plan on making more advanced videos soon, so if you're already past the early game, or if you know what you're doing for basic stuff, uh, skip this video, and I'll have more videos for y'all later. So, um, the very first thing I want to tell everybody um, in the very beginning of the game, what you should do is get your town hall right here to level 10. There is absolutely no point in being below town hall 10. Once you get to town hall 10, you can unlock tier two troops, which are called guards in this game. And um, one of my favorite things is the hourly leaderboards. So as you can see right here, um, the hourly leaderboards are gonna be at the top of your daily section, right when you click on the top left little event section, it's gonna be right here. So you can see exactly what you need to do on this page for whatever hourly event it is. And when you go over here, you can see the rewards you get for one, two, and three stars. And if you scroll down, you can see the rewards you get for placing in the event. So you only get points, or you only get rewards for placing in first, second, third, or fourth through 10th place. And if you scroll up here, hit the top right button, not the X, you can see whatever um, leaderboards there are. Uh, let me just go ahead and show you one from before. So if I click on this troop training one, you can see exactly how many points you would have needed to get first place. So moving on, I want to tell you what buildings are the best, um, especially in the early game and just overall. The number one building you're going to want to build first and to max out is your studies. Studies are huge. They save you hours and hours and hours of speed ups. They basically add a research speed boost to every single research that you do. The next building is the Dragon Temple. This basically adds a XP bonus to all of your dragons. So whenever you're attacking, gathering, using your chow, whatever it is, you get more experience out of it. Um, it's really good and it helps your dragons level up much faster. So number two and three for me are tied. It's gonna be the treasury and the embassy. So what these do is they work pretty similarly. Um, only every five levels matters for these. So every five levels for the treasury, you get added on max monster resource ally bonus. Now that sounds a little weird. Basically what it does, if you go here, you can see resource bonus, mine's at 78%. It makes that go up a little bit. And what that means is whenever you attack a monster, if I scroll down a little bit, this is for a raid, you can see the looted resources. That's what you would get without the ally bonus. However, with the bonus from allies, that's what you get. So you, get, you upgrade this part by upgrading your treasuries. Um, in order to max that out, as you can see here, it's 78 out of 78 for me. You need to have ally gold. Um, I'm not going to worry about that in this video. I'll go over it in another one. For embassies, it's very similar, except instead of doing that resource bonus, it just adds an ally slot. Ally slots are really huge and important later on in the game. And that's why I rank these at number three slash four. Going on to the next ones, these are the less important buildings. Um, for me, number five is going to be barracks. Now these add on a very insignificant boost to your troop training. It's honestly just minutes. Um, in the early game, it's not that huge. Late game, I'm sure it's a little bit better. But overall, adding all of these level ups and buildings, it does add on a lot. So they're not useless, although each level might seem a little small. Um, but they do add up over time. And uh, number six is the wards. All these do is add on your hospital cap and then make your troops heal faster. Um, you don't really need hospital cap that much because you're not really gonna have much troops in your hospital cap. Um, that's really only useful if you're getting zeroed, but if you're getting zeroed, you have other problems and I can't really help you too much with that. So the last two buildings, completely useless buildings, um, your farm and quarry. Now they're not, completely completely useless they're only useful for upgrading your town hall unfortunately for these awful buildings you have to use them to upgrade your town hall so as you can see here if i want to go up to town hall 19 which i don't for a long time i would have to get my farm up to level 16 and if i wanted to go up to town hall 20 i'd have to get my quarry up to 19. that's just how they work they're really not that useful other than that they're completely useless so that's it for construction that I'm gonna go over in this video. There are other things with your town hall. I don't recommend rushing your town hall to a very high level. In the early game, I would say max go for 15 and then 
wait a while before you move up to 18. However, if you're going to spend money, going up to 18 may not be a bad idea. Okay, so for the next thing, I'm going to go over research. So you go right here. Um, you can see there's a bunch of different research trees. A lot of people don't know which one to focus. So I want to quickly go through all of these. I'm not going to go in super detail, but I'm going to go in just a little bit so you understand what each research does. So in Army Research, this one's one of the more self-explanatory trees. As you can see here, this is all your militia research up here. you got your scout right here. Um, basically what scout does is you can scout other people's cities to see what they have in it. However, if their scout is higher than yours, you cannot scout them. But if their scout is the same or below, you can scout them. That's all this is for. Eventually, everybody's going to have 20 scouts, so it's not going to matter too much. Um, concurrent marches gives you another march. So you unlock this at Town Hall 11 once you get your training pit to 11. I recommend getting that pretty early on. That way you're able to get your third march. Um, I believe you get your second at Town Hall 6. And something I want to go over is March Cap. This is in almost every single tree, and it is the most important research that you're going to have. Each upgrade adds on how many troops you can send in an attack. So it adds on a lot over time whenever you're hitting monsters and players. Down here is just your basic guard research. The strength boost is how much they can attack. The training boost is how fast you train them. And the toughness is how many troops you lose when attacking players or when getting attacked. That's all that's really useful for. I prefer going strength, training, then toughness. Um, however, the order doesn't really matter too much. And something you'll see in a, a couple other trees is the rally reinforcement march cap and the city defender march cap. These two aren't that great. Um, you're not going to have really enough troops to max this out early on. So you can level it up a little bit. I could free speed it up quite a bit. However, I just don't bother with it because I don't have that many troops yet. So later on, you can upgrade it, but for the most part, I would almost never use speedups on this unless you really have to for some reason. Um, but for the most part, don't worry about those too much. Moving on to the next tree, City Growth. Now, this tree is beautiful, but it also kind of sucks. Um, it's amazing because you get free speed up and you get a couple other things that help out a lot. Um, as you can see here, the food production and the ore production, both of these are really useless but you have to upgrade them in order to move down the tree. So that kind of sucks. Um, the best thing in this tree is going to be the free speed up, the troop training, and the construction boost, and march cap. So the free speed ups are really amazing. They help out a ton and they will save you a lot of speeds over time. So will the construction boost and the troop training boost all the way down here. Each one gets more efficient than the previous one. Same thing goes for the free speed up. So I recommend boosting for this tree on might growth days because this tree gives a ton of might. However, it will not make you any stronger um, really when attacking players outside of the march cap. So this tree is really good for growing and it gives you a ton of might. Other than that, it doesn't help you hit stronger besides the march cap, which isn't every tree. So moving forward, I'm going to go to monster hunting. Now this tree is really amazing. It basically affects how efficiently you can hit monsters and use your broom. So monster hunter level affects what level monster you can hit. Um, you can always upgrade that to whatever the max is for you. However, it doesn't really matter if you're gonna upgrade it. For example, this one will get me level six, but if I can't hit level six, there's not much point in upgrading it until I'm stronger. However, I'm gonna get that probably later today. Um, but moving forward, down here, you can see the production boost, the brew capacity, and the efficiency boost. Now, what the production boost does is it makes your brew regenerate faster. So once you're under the cap, your brew is going to regenerate. Um, upgrading this will make it just slightly faster each upgrade, and over time, it can save you a lot of brew. Um, the brew cap is just brew cap. affects how much brew you can have at a time. Uh, the brew cap basically just raises your brew cap, so it's whatever the production will bring it to. It won't go any higher than that. And the efficiency, this is my favorite one. It lowers how much brew you use every time you attack a monster. Um, now this one, in order from what I think is the best to worst, I would say efficiency, then production, then brew capacity. However, production and efficiency are really close. And then you got your march cap down here to the left. This is a research a lot of people ignore. They don't really research it because they don't understand what it does. 
So what this does is whenever you're attacking a monster, you'll see how much percent you do. Um, typically what you want to do to be efficient is you want to be able to four hit a monster. No matter what level you're hitting, you want to try and four hit. That is ideal, especially in the early game. Um, very late game, you can three hit monsters, but we're not worrying about that. We want to four hit monsters. Um, if you're not able to four hit a monster, let's say you're hitting 23, 24%, a big chunk of the time, you're probably lacking research and max monster HP damage. Now, whether it's up here or down here, it doesn't really matter. I know right here it says level two and three plus. This affects any monster above those levels. So level four, five, six, it will affect those monsters and you'll be able to do more damage on those monsters. Now down here, same thing, level four or five plus, it will help out for any monsters above that level. So if you're really struggling, you're hitting 23, 24%, upgrade this, see how that helps you out. I'm sure it will get you there where you need to be. Um, now to the right here, you have Titan Hunt. This unlocks Titans. Titans are an extremely efficient way to use your brew and get points for Dragon Quest every day. Titans also give a ton of resources, a good amount of experience, and a lot of gems. So they're really nice to hit. Personally, if you find one near you, I almost always go for attacking those. Even if you don't get the last hit, it's still really good to hit. Um, and down here is basically the same thing, again, um, as the top. So going on the next tree, this is the most self-explanatory tree. It is just resource gathering. So this tree is pretty easy to understand. You have the same thing with this, except it's resource nodes, not monsters. Um, right here is how efficiently you can gather basically each resource. Um, you want to focus gold the most, and then after that, you can get these. But the only reason you want to get food and ore up is just so you can work your way down to the march cap, because the march cap is always great. You want to get that in every single tree. Basically, for march cap, you want to get the easiest march cap you can get in any tree. So... If I were to work down here, you can see it's 12 hours, and it would be 12 hours to get this. So that's really not that bad, um, especially later on, 12 hours to get some March cap up isn't too bad. But the next thing over here is going to be the gem gathering. It goes with the Titans kind of hand in hand, affects how fast you can gather gems. Um, especially if you're killing a lot of Titans, you're going to want to get those gems. So this isn't too bad to research. Um, and then to the left here is protected resources. All this does is add a little bit onto your resources that you can protect. Um, it just affects your protection cap right there. Obviously, you can see I'm pretty OC right now. Um, normally, whenever I'm OC, I'm shielded. I'm on, not right now because I'm online. However, if you're offline and you're OC, you're probably going to want to shield, so that way you're not losing all your resources. Okay, moving on to the next trees. Uh, sorry about that. We're going to go on to raid tactics. What this does is, depending on your clan, um, we do raids pretty frequently. I'm in the top clan for my realm right now, so we're doing raids all the time. Um, this tree will help out with anything raid related. Um, something I want to point out real quick is your raid marches are different than your regular marches. Your raid marches are dependent on your research in your raid tree. So you can see down here for each biome, it has its own ra uh, raid march cap. Um, personally, I like to focus my main biome more than the other ones, but I put points in all of them. Um, I don't focus this tree that much just because it's not super important to focus early on. However, it's pretty nice to upgrade every now and then, especially if you like raiding a lot. So I don't mind putting some points into this tree. So the first thing you're going to want to do for this, obviously get the first thing. Um, just put one point in both of these until way later on when you're doing higher level raids. And same thing down here, just put one point in all of this stuff. Um, you can read each of these. It, it's pretty self-explanatory for this stuff. I'm not going to go over this tree that much because it's not super important for helping out with a lot of the gameplay. However, I will point out down here, this is where you get your second raid march. This is super convenient. It helps out a lot. So get that whenever you can if you like raiding. Going on to the next three trees. All of these are the same thing except they're different versions because they're on different biomes. So the first one's grasslands, second one's badlands, and the third one is swamp. Um, these are commonly referred to as biome researches. I'm going to click on the Badlands one because I'm a Badlands main, um, and I can show you just everything on here. They're all the same for every single one, it's just different biomes. So up here, you got the Dragon XP boost. This one is like the Dragon Temples, except for dragons of that specific biome. So if I upgrade this, all my Badlands dragons get more experience. Um, what I recommend doing is actually on all of your trees, Upgrade this as much as you're comfortable with. I would honestly max it out, especially early on, because it's 16 hours, but that's not that much for a 6% boost. 
that will help out a ton. Um, the next two are going to be the uh, gather rate and the attack for monsters. Um, both of these help out a decent amount. They're not super huge, but they will help push you that little bit further, especially for monsters if you're struggling. And then you got your March Cap. We're going to ignore that. This research right here, the Badlands Ally Bonus First Players, um, it's also down here. Don't upgrade this at all in the early game. Honestly, probably in the mid game. This is a very late game research. Uh, it, it matters with allies in the early game. You're not going to know how to do allies that much. I'm going to have more videos about that way later on. So just ignore this research for now. Moving on to the right side, you have the Badlands Dragon Attack Boost. What this does, is it makes your dragons attacking PvE, PvP, raids, whatever it is, it makes their attack stronger by whatever percent that upgrade is. So this one will be 5.8%. Early game, it's not a huge boost uh, percent-wise, but it will add on a decent amount to your attacks, especially for raids and stuff like that if you're struggling. Biome research is the way to go, obviously after raid research. <laughs> um, next thing is the march speed. So this affects my Badlands Dragon's march speed, makes Badlands Dragons basically go faster than other dragons. Something to point out with this one, if you match a Badlands Dragon with a, let's say, Swamp Dragon, um, it goes by the slower of the two. So if I match a Badlands with a Swamp Dragon, it'll go at the speed of the Swamp Dragon for me. And my Swamp Dragon March speed is not as high as my Badlands. It's just something to keep in mind. Not a huge thing, but it's pretty nice to know. Next is the Ability Boost. This is by far one of the best researches in the game. Dragon Ability Bonus is huge. It adds on to um, your Dragon's attacks, how fast they gather, how hard they hit, and basically how well they do your wall. For your legendary dragons, it'll add on to all of their um, special boosts as well. Rot has a research boost, Bob and Wrecker has a troop training boost, and Captain Sparkles has a construction boost. It will boost all of those as well. This research is huge, and every time you upgrade it, you'll see a significant boost to your attacks and uh, how fast your dragons can gather. Going on to the left side, this research is awful and it makes me cry. However, you have to do it in order to work your way down the tree. So it sucks, but you got to do it to get to the good stuff. Now down here, you can see the defender bonus and the attacker bonus. I recommend just focusing one because they are pretty expensive, especially later on. Um, so I like to do attacker because I like to attack more than I like to defend. The next one is your bonus Badlands stat for allies. So the wording is a little weird on this. Basically, this doesn't do anything for you. However, for people that are buying you as an ally, it helps them out. It's really not that good for you yourself. It doesn't do anything to help you. However, the next research, bonus from Badlands Allies. This one is huge. It is so nice. It adds on a percent bonus on top of whatever your ally bonus is. So as you can see here, if I were to upgrade this, 2.5% bonus on top of whatever I had before. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what that means real quick. If I go to allies, you can see here my Badlands bonus is at 61.9. However, if I go to my defense, you can see my ally bonus whenever I'm attacking or defending is actually at 68.1. So just with that, it adds on a little over 6%. And my BFA isn't that great right now. However, once it gets higher to 1, 2, 3, 400, whatever it is, that research adds on a huge amount. So while early game, it might not be that good. Mid to late game, especially for people who love their allies, it is huge and it adds on such a nice bonus. Okay, now for the last couple of researches, I don't really want to go over these that much. Basically, Dragon Discipline and Shrine Specialties are more pay to win trees. Um, these are for the big spenders. Dragon Discipline will upgrade your Epic Dragons, um, which I'm not going to go over in this video. And Shrine is for whenever the stronghold comes out, which is not for at least three to four months in any realm. So we're not going to worry about those at all. Realm Mastery, again, something extremely late game. So what I'm going to move on to now is dragons. So I made a little chart kind of showing you what dragons are. I'm only showing a couple dragons, the ones you will see in the very beginning of the game. So at the top, you have your legendary dragons. Everybody gets one of these for free in the beginning on your second day of playing. I really hope everybody got that because if you didn't, you're missing out on a ton of stuff. So um, the next row is PvP dragons. 
So whatever your legendary dragon that you got at the top is, match it with the PvP dragon on the bottom. Um, I also apologize for the picture of Bubbles. I could not find a picture of Bubbles to save my life um, online, so that's what I'm stuck with. Hopefully it's not bugging anybody too much. It drives me absolutely crazy. But match the dragon um, above it with the one below it, just for PvP and Legendary. So I have Rot. I match him with Yurk. That's what I call him. Um, it's the guy on the left in the middle. Those are the two Badlands dragons. They go together really well because Rot is really good at attacking players and being on my wall. Um, Rot can also attack monsters. That just goes with any Legendary dragon. Well, the PvP dragons are only good at attacking players and on your wall. That's all they're really useful for. Um, and they do a really good job at, of that. So if you have uh, Bob and Wrecker, you would match it with Bubbles. And if you have Captain Sparkles, you would match it with Quartz. So that's how that goes. Um, with this, you want to focus your matching dragons with all of your Chow. Uh, I don't recommend using Chow early on. However, to get a couple levels in the early game, maybe up until level 30, level your dragons up. Only use it on those two dragons. So for me, it'll be Rot and Yurt. That's all I would want to focus. I don't want to worry about my other two dragons that much. Now moving on to PvE dragons. Uh, I only put the first set on there. A Chomper, Frank, Ruby. There are three other ones that you get and more later. Um, those are going to be Migo, Bovis, and Bertha. But I only put the first three on there just for the sake of this video. Um, these dragons are only good at attacking monsters and gathering fast. Don't use any chow on these dragons at all. You really just want to save that chow up for your PvP dragon and your legendary dragon. Um, because your PvE dragons get a lot of XP from attacking monsters and from gathering. So you don't need to worry about putting any chow into them at all. Okay, and the last thing I want to go over for this video um, is something that I think is very important that a lot of people don't do, um, especially I see in the mid game, is they don't three star their dragon quest every day. Now, I know this might sound like a lot of work for some people. Um, it's not too much work, but if you have the time to do it each day, um, it shouldn't take you too long. Three-star your Dragon Quest. You can see here exactly what you need to do. Basically, attack monsters or titans and gather resources in that biome. It is based on the biome for the day. Today is Grasslands. Tomorrow will be Badlands. The day after that will be Swamp. You want to make sure you're hitting the right uh, biome every day and know when reset is for you. Otherwise, you're going to be pretty far behind on everybody else if you're not three-starring this every day. What this does is you can see here the rewards. It gives shields. It gives a ton of stamps where you can buy um, dragon shards to rank up your dragons. It gives you chow. It gives you all kinds of stuff. It's really useful. Placing in it is even better because you get bargain bin stamps, but I'm not going to go over that too much in this video, although those are huge and very important. And a little tip to three-star this is... Whenever you're not attacking monsters, send out your dragons to go gather. As you can see here, I'm gathering three level five nodes. Um, I'm not doing it on the same biome right now because I was going for placing in the resource gathering event. But you want to send typically to the same biome. And each of these is going to be 40,000 of that resource. And I get one point per resource gathered. So this would be an easy 120,000 points. It doesn't take that long. And my troops are going to be sitting in my base anyway, so it doesn't matter too much. That's all I have for today's video. Thank you for watching. Please let me know um, how you'll feel about the video. If you have any tips, suggestions, or anything, feel free to message me. You can mail me in-game. Do whatever. Um, this is not my first account. Trust me. <laughs> I, I'm a 60 mil account. This is not my first account. I'm not just some noob trying to teach all the game. Um, I actually know what I'm doing, and I really hope I can help everybody out. If you have anything you want to see, feel free to message me. You can mail me in the game. Other than that, y'all have a great night, and hopefully I'll see y'all soon.